task for this video would be to start tearing all this dead rotten stuff up and see what we have down here and then we'll be cutting this board out and see how that goes and then this one here will be taking this next board out and see what we have to replace so stay tuned we'll come back when I get a little bit more done okay here's here's what I have so far my uh, voice is going to sound kind of muffled because I have a respirator on just because I don't want to be breathing this in but you can see what I've got so far is this is the board that goes back here now that hole down there is where the wires come up I pushed them back down so I don't have to worry about them but you can see here on the side that's all rotten this board here you can see edges falling apart Come along down here and you can see how much all this is falling down this is just coming apart and you can see how much that is down because this should be, this here should be right up against against this so I need to come down here a little bit more and just just coming right apart. I've got a bag here. I'm throwing this stuff in. And here's this board here. You can see. Just coming apart. So that's kind of where we're at. You can see all this big hole right back in here. That's that's outside. That's that's the license plate from the back. And right over here in that corner, you can see that. This board here back in here is all gone underneath the door that's all gone so yeah this yeah you shouldn't be able to do that with plywood but I'm gonna have to replace all that so I'm not sure how much more I'm gonna have to tear up but I'm gonna tear up some more I'll come back when I get a little bit uh, more done right, let's take a look here at this board down here it's just falling right apart this here is the lining on the bottom to keep moisture and stuff from coming up on it or in this case it helped trap the moisture I think so we're just gonna have to start pulling this pulling off the where it's stapled or something. But you can see it almost looks like it's burnt as as black as it is. But that's just the DK and you can see here's one of the supports right here that didn't get completely rotten but you can see right down here it's all cracked and stuff so that's gonna have to get replaced. I'm just not sure how far back so that's kind of where I'm at uh, we'll just go from here and see what's going on but this whole back thing is worse than I thought it was but better than I expected after I seen the, the first thing so that's where we're at we'll pause the video and come back when I a little bit more torn out uh, yeah this piece that was still in here I pulled on a little bit and it just broke all all apart there wasn't really anything holding it and you can see there's another little piece right down here it's gonna just break right off so I'm not sure if you can see that we're we're getting into some little bit better wood so I may not have to take this one back too far but I don't know if you can see they fastened this down with staples so they're not going to pull up quite as easy as I would hope to have. but that's what we got so let me clean up some more and we'll come back and get a little bit more done okay what I'm going to do to make this laser take it out I got the saw set up so that it's going to be about the depth of the plywood which I think is 5 8 so what I'll do is I'll cut right along down here and that'll let me free that up and then I'll do the same thing 
on the other side so I can uh, start taking those pieces up. I'm not going to do this section over here just yet. I want to do this one so I can see how much boards I have to replace. If I don't have to replace the supports like this, then I will go back as far as I have to for that. So uh, let me uh, pause this again and I'll make those cuts and come back because I'm sure you don't want to watch me and listen to me make those cuts. And if you look, you hit my steam too well, but you can see as I open this up, there's a lot of ants in here. So as I have this off, I'm going to have to spray for them because we don't want those in here because they'll just keep eating the rest of stuff up. Alright, pulled the insulation back and it looks like we have good wood all the way up to just about that corner. So I'm going to be able to uh, stub in another piece. Not exactly sure what kind of joint I'm going to put in there, but I'll put a joint in there to be nice and solid. And uh, that's what I have to go back to is there. So let me get some uh, ant spray and I'll spray for those ants when it gets too bad. All right, this is the other side. And let's look down here by the door. Underneath the board is all rotten underneath. And it's rotten up to here. And if you look, this is the plywood that was rotten. That's, that's all shot. But it looks like I might not be too bad on the board. There's a little bit of rotten spot on that. So I might have to only go back to right about here and replace that board. Bottom of it looks pretty good. So I just need to get enough of that cut out that I can find out for sure what size that board is. So I can replace with the same size. But that's where we're at. And uh, now to clean up a little bit more. I haven't finished taking this piece out yet. I'll finish that. But I wanted to get this, this side over here tore up before I got too far with that. Then have no place to stand because once that comes up down over here, I won't be able to stand there. Well, we're going to take a look at the damage. Now we got the plywood off. We can see just that part of that board back there is bad. From here forward is gone. This one right from about here is, is good. This one right around in here. That one's good back to there. This one I don't know yet because I need to take more of this off. So with these boards being good all the way around here, what I'm thinking I might do is go ahead, once I repair this over here, I might just put another board alongside of it to give it extra support and then not try and take all this up underneath there because that's, that's good to take out what I have that's bad down here where it bolts down to the, the frame. And then there was no bolts going through the back piece. It was just kind of hand, you know, nailed along there. And then I have a bolt back here, I have a bolt here, and then I have another bolt right up here. And it's I'm going to take this board out from right around here someplace, past that there, maybe right up in here and put it all the way down there. Then what I'll do is I think I'll run another board along there, and then come back to this one is good here. So I'll probably cut right along that board. And take this section out so I'll have a nice nice size section to replace because you can't just do one it's just not stable enough so I'll do that and then uh, I think that's what I'll take up I'll go ahead and take this piece up and then I'll be able to put another board along here to put my new one on not not quite a, the best way to do it but it's the, the best with what I have here so I think that's what I'm, my process is going to be here I just need to finish cleaning the rest of this up uh, they have insulation there so I'll put some more insulation once they're all done what I might do is put the frame in and then see if we can figure out where it's leaking from. Watch it, make sure it's not getting wet. we we'll run a hose up there. I think I might have to get up because it might be leaking on the outside coming in around the frame coming down here. Or if we come in around the door getting in down here. And because the camper sits most of the time a little bit of a slope this way, maybe that's why this side rotted more. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to figure it out and we can... We can put water on it, water on it, and see if we get see any leaks. If so, then no, then we don't have all of it sealed up. So that's gonna be our process once we get the floor fixed. We'll at least have a frame. All right, we have a bolt right back here 
if you can see the bolt goes through that board into the frame. And there's another one in this spot right back here, there's one. And there's also one over here that goes through that bolts that board, the outside support down to the frame. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to add that to the board as I do that. I'm gonna get that hole drilled and put that bolt through there somehow. Now on these sides over here where I had to get in there, what I'll do is I'll take, uh, I'll scribe a straight line and cut this off straight and put a piece in there. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'll cut this off where it's straight, put a piece in there. And I might use, instead of nails, I might use little screws in case I need to get back in there again for some reason. But we're going to have to take where those wires come up. Once I get the floor, and I'll have to find where that was at. And then drill up through there uh, to get that marked in there. And then run the wires back up. And that's kind of our process. Now when you're cutting, you have to make sure you watch out because there is power line running in here. And this looks like this is probably your AC line being that orange line like that. That's probably the AC. So that's why when I set the saw blade, I set just barely to go through the plywood. And you can see down here, I just barely cut into it when I cut down through there. So it didn't go through very far. Far enough to make sure it cut it. Now I need to take a look at something we need to consider when we're making these changes. Is right here is the metal support frame of the frame. That's metal. So this board here is sitting on here. So is this one sitting on it. So when I make my my replacements, I need to make sure that I'm not having a joint that is in between these bars. I need to have it so that it's supported by at least one of those. So I need to make sure when I join these that it, both boards are supported by this beam that goes under here because this is a metal beam support for the uh, the frame for the trailer. So that's something I need to consider when I'm putting these in is this is a rotten part and it's right up above there. So this has got to go away. So I'm going to have to come back here and so I have a support back here because you don't want to have it in between because the pressure there's nothing to support that joint. So I need to plan that out when I'm going through here. This one's the same way. I can just cut this bad part off and then... I can make a, a joint either another one side of it or make a joint that will be a good supportive joint and then I'll be able to have that both boards supported by that, that seam instead of just a butt joint I'll have to have a, a tape of where it, they kind of interlock maybe a little bit and this one here you can see that bad clear back to here so this is going to be a long piece I'm going to have to so I'll be cutting the next piece out here and so there's that, but I wanted to have something I could uh, walk on for a while until I get that done. So that was something else you're looking at as we're doing this is you got to worry about your support. Because if I just took this and fastened this here, there'd be no support on this one. The new one would have support back to there. But if you're bringing something that's heavy, you know, like a four-wheeler or a bike or something in, your pressure is going to be on this board, on that seam that is not, not supported. So that's something I got to plan too when I get ready to do this. Well, I uh, pulled up that next board to see where I need to go to. And the next support back is right here. So I need to come back to here for my joint so that I have, I need to have a, a, the joint supported on here. And so both joints are supported. So I need to seam them from, from about here down to here, at least three inches on both sides. That way they're both supported good. This one I can do over that seam. This next one, because it's rotten over the seam, I need to bring it back. Put it back to here. So I'm going to have to cut another section out of this one because that needs to come back. So I might have to cut clear back to here on this one to take all this out. But I'm going to wait because I need something to sit on while I'm uh, working on it. So I think the next thing I'll do is I need to work on this outside piece, this back piece, and the outside piece again. So what I might do is start the next one is have a back piece that runs back all the way back here. Do that one 
and then work on the, the sides. This one here be probably a little bit less work because it's a little shorter. So I'll have to bring that in there somehow and anchor it down. You can probably tell my voice is muffled a little bit. Uh, this is the respirator mask. As you put it up something a little bit lighter, you can see how much dirt there was on that. And that's how much these respirators have uh, saved. The inside is clean. Around the outside is not too well, but uh, uh, you can see the inside. So I've been breathing clean, clean air. The outside's dirty. And you can't wear those other, those surgical masks, those little kind of disposable ones, because they don't seal good enough to do this. You have to have a real respirator mask like this when you're working with dusty environments. Uh, they, they just they just have to seal so much better.